Good morning and uh, welcome to the 940 a.m. Eastern Time session. Uh, this session is titled Unitime Around the World. The presenters this morning for this session are Thomas Mueller and Zuzana Mullerova. Uh, oh, good morning and welcome to the presentation Unitime Around the World. Um, Barak introduced me already. I am a person who provides support to users of Unitime. And with me, we have Tomáš Miller, who is the technical lead of the project, and he's ready to answer your questions in the discussions part of this presentation. Um, I would like to first introduce Unitime a little bit, just in case. So Unitime is a comprehensive academic scheduling solution. And to solve the academic scheduling problems, it has five components, course timetabling, examination timetabling, student scheduling, instructor assignment, and event management. Um, we have users basically all around the world. You can see a world cloud consisting of countries from which we got registrations. Uh, we got a total of over 500 voluntary registrations. Uh, voluntary meaning that we don't require registration, so we might not know about all the users who have downloaded in a time and use it. From the registrations, we also know that 97 institutions indicated that they use Unitime in production. Uh, during the past year, we've had 45 new registrations. So when the project is alive, new institutions have been downloading Unitime and starting to use it. Uh, Many of the institutions also use a localized version of Unitime, so they can adapt it. Why have they decided to use Unitime? Well, the first and the main reason, I believe, is that Unitime solves the timetabling and scheduling problems of higher education institutions. So it helps the institution to use resources more effectively. It helps students to graduate in time so they don't spend so much money on tuition by studying a couple of years more. And it also, by the efficiency, it helps to keep the tuition low. Uh, Unitime also helps, helps institutions to adapt to changes. So for example, a new building, a new curricula, and so on. And uh, it also makes it possible to plan the future and test the different what-if scenarios. So they can build a timetable for a made-up situation if they want to make changes in the future. Another large chunk of reasons is that Unitime is open source and it is free to download. Uh, it uses other open source projects such as Java or Tomcat. Uh, the source code of this open source project is maintained and kept on GitHub. Uh, there are nightly builds available for download. Uh, the changes that schools request are contributed back to the project in most cases. Uh, it needs to be programmed in such a way that it works for all these different institutions that have different needs. So it helps to keep the code versatile. Uh, and another reason is that the possibility that there is the possibility for the users to localize unit time and uh, some of them contribute this localization back. And the third main part is that we provide commercial support. Uh, it's available if needed. Oh, that was the general introduction. And now I would like to go through information about some of the institution from different countries and continents that use Unitime. The main one is Purdue University. I will provide a little bit of information because there's another presentation only about Purdue today. Uh, Purdue University is the main contributor of Unitime. So it uses all the five components that I mentioned before. Uh, it's an American institution with regular three times 50 minutes classes or two times 75 minutes classes. Uh, the students attend this every week for the whole semester. Um, the student scheduling and registrations are used for around 49,000 students. Uh, and they use exam scheduling for both final and midterm examinations or evening examinations. And they use the event management to book uh, additional space in classrooms or even some 
spaces that are not usually used for classes. Uh, the challenges that Unitime helps to handle or stand up to are uh, that Purdue needs to centrally timetable large lecture rooms and the computing labs. Uh, it helps coordinate the, the timetabling between 70 departments or around 70 departments. Uh, these departments share classrooms. And the pre-registration and batch scheduling is done for about 35,000 of undergraduate students. Uh, it is a big timetabling problem and student scheduling problem because there are around 3,000 courses with around 9,200 timetabled classes and around 1,200 exams, final exams. Uh, Purdue has learning communities. So another part of the timetabling and student scheduling is that you have a community of students who want to stay together through the courses that they take. So they need to stay together for math, for English, and Unitime needs to handle that. Uh, Purdue uses Unitime for enrollment projection simulations. So they try to run the student scheduling and uh, or they project how many students should go into which course so they know whether they have enough student uh, enough spaces in those courses um, and to handle all this purdue has a large setup an unusually large setup for unit time they use three web servers and two solver servers as for the integration with other systems, uh, the main integration is with the student information system, which is Ocean Banner at Purdue. Uh, they use uh, Banner XE APIs for student information, for the student schedules of classes, for student enrollments into classes, and they have custom code to handle courses. Um, the information from Unitime is also used in the learning management, but uh, they get the learning management system gets the information from Banner. So it first goes to the student information system and then the learning management system takes it from there. Unitime interfaces uh, with the registration override workflow system where uh, departmental people uh, allow overrides for students so that the students can enroll into courses where they would otherwise not be allowed. Um, Unitime uses information from degree planning software. Uh, now it's degree works, but it's in process of being replaced by a different one by Eduna. Uh, other systems also use various reporting and scripting uh, capabilities of Unitime. Uh, and the unit times rest for JSON API. So there are also other systems that, for example, use the data from unit time for reporting or for something else, and then draw the data from unit time through these options. Um, if you're interested in more information, please go and see how Purdue University has benefited from the use of unit time and open source practices uh, presentation that will be. Uh, presented by Stephanie Schlottenhofer at 11.50 a.m. So you're welcome to go there. Uh, another university that's using Unitime is Masaryk University in the Czech Republic. Uh, Masaryk University uses course timetabling and event management, and it's at seven faculties out of ten. The faculties are quite independent, so each of the faculties uh, solves timetabling as they choose. They don't have to use the same software, all of them. The first faculty I would like to mention is the Faculty of Education. They have around 5,000 students, uh, both in present and combined form of study. The present form of study means the students come every week for regular classes, and the combined form of study means that the students come on Fridays, sometimes on Saturdays, and have a very irregular timetable. So, each course is a couple of times per semester. Uh, the challenges at this faculty are double majors. Uh, they have many different combinations. If someone wants to become a teacher, they can have a combination of German language and history, physics, and mathematics. Uh, 
really many different combinations and uh, you need to timetable them with minimum student conflicts so that the students can study really almost any combination available. Uh, they also have teacher constraints. So uh, the classes are from eight to eight, but the teachers cannot be there eight to eight every day. So there are restrictions such as eight hours work day and the teacher can teach only six hours within the eight hours work day. Uh, Faculty of Education has contributed to unit time um, by providing or having the curriculum timetabling time implemented and contributing it back. Uh, and alternative sets of weeks for classes. So you just say you need your class every other week and unit time decides whether it should be even weeks or odd weeks. Another faculty is the faculty of sports. Their challenge, around 2000 students, their challenge is mainly shared classrooms and sports facilities that are spread around the town. So for them, it was necessary to in, implement travel times in unit time to know, to have information, how long it takes to get from one location to another. Uh, then for a combined form of study, which means the students come several times per semester on Fridays, uh, they need to strictly follow curricula. No, conf no student conflicts are allowed. No classes can overlap for the students. And during COVID, we had another challenge. Uh, they had some classes that needed to be on site. The rest of them was online. So there was a big modification of the course timetable when some weeks were supposed to be online with the classes that could be taught online. And other weeks, other Fridays were on site with the classes that really need to take place on site, such as sports. The next faculty uh, is faculty of informatics. It's again rather small and it has a very kind of simple setup, one building and uh, regular classes every week. Uh, their challenge was that their plans of study have many elective courses and many optional courses. It was not possible to timetable all of them at different times. So uh, we started combining curricula with student pre-registrations. And from the pre-registrations, we knew which combinations of elective and optional courses the student took together. So these should not overlap, while those that the students don't take together can overlap, no problem. Uh, they are a small faculty, but they have contributed to unit time a lot because uh, an associate professor from the faculty uh, originated the research on unit time and uh, has contributed to a number of published papers about unit time. Uh, faculty of Informatics also co-organized uh, co the International Timetabling Competition 2019, uh, which was about course timetabling. And one of the prizes was also for open source solutions for course timetabling. But I also sponsored that open source prize. Uh, and then the last faculty I would like to mention here is the Faculty of Medicine, which is around 3,000 students, both medical and non-medical. But it's rather complicated. Uh, they used unit time. They started using unit time because they knew that they would have big changes in curricula, new plans of study. They were building a new simulation center that has been opened. Well, it was open two years back. And they need to coordinate hospitals throughout the town. So for the clinical classes, uh, it's possible that uh, a student visits three or four hospitals in the run of two weeks for that clinical course that the student needs to take. Uh, they also use unit time a lot for what if scenarios. So before the new simulation center opened, they created a timetable that uh, to see what it will look like when the classes move to the simulation center, what the bottlenecks are, what they should be careful about, what else to do so that everything goes smoothly. Uh, Faculty of Medicine has contributed some new distribution constraints that consider us weeks. For example, they have clinical classes that are two weeks, and those two weeks need to be 
right next to each other. So following weeks. Those were some details about the individual faculties. Um, as for the overall integration with other systems at Masaryk University, it's only in the integration with the student information system. And uh, we need to exchange data with the system only at the beginning of timetabling at, at the end. At the beginning, when setting up a new semester in unit time, we need to pull data from the student information system and we use the unit times XML inf interfaces for that. Then when the timetable is ready and needs to get back to the system, uh, we use the scripts in unit time to generate CSV files that we then import into the student information system. So we've been to America, to Europe. Now let's move on to Asia. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Asian Pacific University in Malaysia. They again use course timetabling and event management in unit time. They introduced a new concept to us. Uh, they have overlapping sessions or how they call it modules. That means that classes are always in progress. There are no separate semesters, no breaks between semesters. So a new session for new students uh, is always timetabled on top of the existing sessions or existing modules. Uh, they also have cohorts attending the same classes, which means uh, that a group of students sticks together uh, throughout all the courses. So they always need to be in the same exercise and the same recitation in the same laboratory. Uh, it's modeled during curricula and curricula reservations. It's just uh, saying that there is a tool how to handle it in unit time. Uh, for us, the presented challenges were how to define an academic session, because up to that point, we always had it as separate semesters. Uh, then uh, another challenge was that when new students come, it may be necessary to change the classes that are already in progress. So how do we do it? How do we change previous modules so that it works for the new module? Um, their contribution has been the checks uh, of conflicts between overlapping academic sessions. Uh, their integration with other systems uses custom scripts from unit time and the APIs from unit time. Uh, Back to Europe, uh, AGH University of Science and Technology in Krakow. They have been using unit time for almost 10 years. They use it for course timetabling, student scheduling, and event management. Uh, they have a number of mostly independent faculties, so in that they are similar to Masaryk University. But each of the faculties have two timetabling problems. They have courses and classes offered to their faculty, and they have courses or classes offered for students at other faculties. So how do they do it? How do they coordinate this? Uh, for student information, they combine curricula and pre-registrations. And it depends on departments what they use. So the biggest challenge for them with which unit time helps is the coordination between faculties uh, and the student scheduling. Uh, their contributions have been quite a few, some bigger, some smaller. The bigger one is deterministic student scheduling when no student conflicts are allowed. Then the smaller one, ones are event meeting contacts or the fact that unit time can now work with PostgreSQL and many fewer, oh, many smaller ones, because whatever is done for them, oh, we can include it in the core unit time. Uh, their integration with other systems is through unit times XML interfaces and through APIs. And again, from continent to continent, uh, first Asia, Lahore University of Management Sciences in Pakistan. They use course timetabling and they've been using it for quite some time already. Uh, I'm mentioning them because they have custom interface with PeopleSoft 
uh, using Unitimes XML interfaces. Uh, the Turkish German University in Turkey again uses Unitime for close time tabling, and their challenge is visiting faculty from Germany. The faculty always comes for only a few days, so how do they incorporate that into that course time tables? Uh, they do not import student information in the form of curricula or students' registrations. They prevent student conflicts by putting in distribution constraints. So they put in constraints, this course, this course, and that course have same students. So no individual, no person data about students. They just say, okay, these courses cannot overlap, have some students. These courses cannot overlap because they have the same students. And the last institution I would like to mention is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the United States. Um, in, uh, again, long ago, more than 10 years ago, they decided to use unit time for course time tabling, but uh, they had fixed times, so they only wanted to use it for assigning rooms. Uh, then they used uh, student scheduling just to avoid time conflicts, check check it, and examination timetabling, where they introduced makeup make exams for students who couldn't attend the regular examination. Uh, they customize unit time a lot. They actually got unit time 3.4. That was before unit time joined Apparel. It was long ago, released 2013. Uh, did a lot of customizations and modifications and sticked or uh, state with this version. Uh, they integrate in their own way. They have used direct database access for data from unit time. And that was all I wanted to say about the institution from around the world. If you're interested in more information, please uh, use these resources uh, and come to the presentation from Stephanie Schlottenhofer later today.